You know guys, like some of you were probably surprised to learn last week that I don't know the first thing about working on a car. I'm constantly surprised at how few people know how to clean their own cars properly. So today for this two part episode, we're at BBI Autosport, one of my favorite places. We've got the choices of all these beautiful cars here. They're all disgusting and they all need cleaning. But why should I be bothered to clean their cars when my car needs attention too? So we've got my car. We've got my 98 Corvette here. I love this car very, very much. I've gotten it dirty just so we can clean it here for you guys. And in this two-part episode, we're gonna show you how to properly clean your car from the wash all the way through to the detail. But before we start cleaning this car, I think we're gonna need some products. Ooh, absorber, synthetic chamois. I like that one better than the, the real leather. It's cheaper too. Oh, wheel cleaner, definitely need some wheel cleaner. So I'm gonna take my wheels off and clean them. Clay bar kit, part of the one, two, three detail. Your clay bar, polish, and wax. That's definitely a must. Uh, some applicator pads, get some extras, some white towels to dry off the wheels with. Oh, aerosol tire wet spray, that's my fave. Oh, black magic bullet. That's gonna be to clean the exhaust. It's nice, nice shape for buffing out the inside of my chrome exhaust. And protectant for the interior, which is a lovely shade of plastic. That should do it. All right, let's get to work. Take matters in your own hands. Keep that car running better, longer. Do everything you can to make sure a small job doesn't turn into a costly one. And AutoZone is the one place with the expertise and tools you need to do the job right the first time. Because do-it-yourself doesn't mean you have to do it alone. Get in the zone. AutoZone. First things first, you gotta get the car wet. My biggest problem with this car is not dirt so much as it is bugs. Lots of them in California, and when you drive fast, they get stuck on there. So I've got some bug and tar remover, and this will get all the really nasty stuff off. So you wanna be pretty liberal with this stuff on the hood. And it's a pre-wash, so you do it before you wash. Just get it all over there. And then if you're the type of guy that likes to do burnouts, you're probably gonna wanna put some behind your wheel arches as well because odds are there's some leftover rubber on there from the last time you lit them up. And as you can see, there is. And this will just help get that stuff right off. And then what you do afterwards is you get a bucket of soapy water and this guy right here. This is just a sponge, but it's wrapped in a netting and it adds a bit of an abrasive thing to get those, uh, to get those bugs in the tar off your car. Regular old car washing soap. I like Black Magic stuff. A, because they sponsor the show, and B, because their products are actually good. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't plug them if I didn't think their products actually worked. We're not using any professional detailing products, so this is all stuff that you can do at home. And now that our bug and tar gel has set in, we're gonna rinse it off with the soap and the sponge. Oh look, I got a hole in the bucket. <laughs> this stuff, look at that, and it just comes right off. If you don't get bugs off quickly, like we've seen happen in Florida where they've got the love bugs, the chitin in the bugs, uh, shells, can really eat through your paint. So you really want to get the bugs off as quickly and easily as possible. Oh yeah, look at that. Tell me that stuff doesn't work, huh? That's why this sponge is like two bucks. It's totally worth having and it lasts a long, long time. All right. Now that we've prepared our car by removing the bug and tar, it's time we actually wash this thing. I use what we call the two bucket system where I keep my clean water in here and then my dirty water in there. So as I wash, I rinse out the mitt in this bucket before getting soap back on it. That's how we avoid scratches. So I'm just gonna go right to it. Right about now, you're probably wondering what's actually underneath the hood of this car. And I will tell you, 
98 Corvette stock bottom end, but it's got pretty much everything else on it that you can do to a normally aspirated car. It's got head work, exhaust work, intake work, software, fuel system work. Makes about 420 horsepower at the wheels. It's also got coilover suspension, sway bars, a roll bar, all kinds of good stuff in terms of suspension and handling because let's face it, stock Corvettes are not exactly known for their handling. Also got these beautiful wheels from Proformance Industries in New York. My friend George made them just for me. Only set in the world, gotta love it. Another important thing to note when you're washing your car, people always make this mistake of putting the mitt on the ground. You don't even know what's on the ground. There's rocks, there's sticks, there's dirt. Every time you put your mitt on the ground, you just pick all that stuff right up. So I'm really emphasizing the two bucket system to clean your car. Keep it nice without ruining your paint in the process. That's how I keep the original, extremely high quality GM paint on this car. <laughs> when you're doing your really dirty parts, like your exhaust tips and your wheels, oftentimes soap isn't enough and you really don't want to use your normal mitt because it'll just ruin the mitt. So I've got a second mitt and I'm actually using some of this Black Magic wheel cleaner, which is one of my favorite products they have. It's really meant for aluminum wheels, but it works equally well on stainless steel exhausts. My car makes more black stuff than most people's cars. <laughs> I don't have what you call catalytic converters. <laughs> Wheel cleaner at work. Then we just hose that right off. Now that our car is washed off but wet, we're gonna use my favorite tool, the clay bar. Stuff looks like silly putty. And what this does is it removes all the imperfections from your paint. All the stuff you can't see and that you can't wash off that you can feel. When you feel the paint, you can feel that it's got some roughness to it. And then when we use the clay bar, we're going to take all that away. So what you want to do is grab some quick detailer, whatever your brand is that you like, and just spray the whole car because this stuff needs a lubricant to work, right? Be really liberal. Ooh. It smells like cinnamon, doesn't it? You can be really liberal with this stuff because it's just, just like a lubricant, a wax, liquid wax. You can use soapy water if you want, but I, th I find that this stuff works better. And then you make a little pancake out of this guy and you just rub it, just rub it right along there. Not too much pressure, just nice even motions back and forth all over. And I'm going to show you how well this works because it gets dirty, right? It's pulling all the imperfections off the paint. So all you do is knead it back up like some silly putty. And now you have a clean surface again. And now you just start the process all over until you do the whole car. I'm using the absorber, which is a synthetic chamois. You can use the real ones or the fake one. Doesn't matter, as long as you want to use a, a chamois of some kind, not just a regular towel to dry the car. It gets you done faster because it absorbs more water. It doesn't scratch your paint like a dirty towel might if your towel's not perfectly clean. And it just helps you smooth the process out, streamline it a little bit. Here's the move. And just drag it right across. That's all you gotta do. I went to one of those cheerleader charity car washes once. The girl put the mitt on the ground and then washed my car and I literally had a scratch the whole way down the car, like a loop format. It was the worst. So don't ever, ever put anything you're gonna rub on your car, don't ever put it on the ground or any dirty surface for that matter because whatever's on that surface is gonna end up rubbing right into your paint. Okay. Now we are washed. And we're gonna finish our wash by doing the glass and then vacuuming the car. Honestly, if I need to tell you how to use one of these devices, you have a much bigger problem than I can help you with. But, we're getting it done. Okay. 
All right, now that we've vacuumed, we're gonna finish it off with a little bit of glass cleaning. There's no rocket science to cleaning windows. Everyone's done it. Use glass cleaner and a microfiber and it's done. The key is if you have tinted windows like I do, you want to use ammonia free glass cleaner because some glass cleaners that use ammonia will eat right through your tinted windows and you've now wasted money and your windows look like crap. So now that I have my ammonia free glass cleaner, I can go to work. It's easy when you have no door frame to clean the window. Obviously, GM has spent a lot of time engineering this beautiful plastic interior uh, just full of injection molding. So we're going to use some of this ProShine interior protectant. Uh, it's meant for plastic and vinyl surfaces and we uh, certainly have plenty of those in the Corvette. So this stuff goes right on. Quick on and a quick right off. Just gets your dust off. I don't like some, some like car washes and detail shops will use armor all or something else that's like real shiny. I can't stand that. The car didn't come shiny. I certainly don't want it to look shiny. And when this stuff dries, it'll dry in the perfect stock finish without that greasiness that most of us who, have, who are into cars can't stand. Well, thanks for joining us on part one of our car care special. Part two, we're going to take it a step further with polishing compound, wax, cleaning the inside of our wheels, and getting the pit marks out of our windows. I'm Matt Farah. You've been watching The Smoking Tire. Join us next week.